Oh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm so happy for Shabbat. I love Shabbat so much. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Shabbat. Uh, I'm here today to do, as always, a video. Uh, got a lot of things going on. I want to talk about these, uh, wow, black holes and blood moons coming and all kind of things are going on. Uh, Carrie Geddon has a vision her mom had. I want to share with you about the uh, Tree of Life. Uh, and then so we're going to get into uh, some announcements I have to show you that I'm not going to play on the channel today. Uh, but I will show you these announcements I want you to go look at. Uh, also, we're going to get into the Bible, always the Bible. Uh, Ezekiel 6th chapter. So uh, before I get into all the news from Israel, uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to just probably show a little clipping from yesterday's video and then a little other clipping, you know, well, you know, the little fast one. Uh, but I'm going to be showing very, a uh, very little bit of it, not a lot. Uh, but I want to get into it and I just reminded myself I need to pull up something I didn't pull up yet. I need to be going to Lion and a Lamb uh, Ministries. I got to show his video on the Israel update and I didn't put it in my news here. So I got to dig it up. So I'll be digging it up uh, somewhere uh, showing that as well. Uh, actually, I will be digging it up and just put it in my email and then pull it up that way. But I want you guys to see that as well. So anyway, let me go here now and play a song coming from Mia. Um, we play a song from Mia when I get into my uh, fair use notice first and then uh, let you guys know. I tell you, we got so much happening. I just can't believe the stuff I'm hearing going on. And so you'll see some of that in my announcements today. But fair use notice in front of you. Uh, and uh, I really hope you guys are staying, warm, staying cool. It's like 100 degrees here today. Officially 100 degrees in my neck of the whip. My neck of the woods. <laughs> my neck of the woods. So I don't know. But keep cool. Keep uh you know, don't get yourself out in the heat too much. Uh, there's a lot going on, a lot of heat things going on today. I want you to also know you can find us on Rumble, Rumble in front of you. You can see I've been posting videos there. So uh, if you ever can't find us on YouTube channel, uh, please go over to Rumble. Okay, you know how things can happen at YouTube. So uh, anyway, I uh, just want to announce that to you. You have to look for Marner Benjamin, okay? I know on my other videos is Marner Campbell, and I had Marner Campbell channel up for a lot of years. I, even before I married my Benjamin husband, I had it up a lot of years, so I didn't want to change it. But now you can go over and find uh, at Rumble Marner Benjamin, okay? All one word together, and uh, like us up here, all one word together, okay? So I uh, just want to announce that to you. So let me go on over now and play a song over here uh, from um, a song here from Mia. Where did I put my song at? Oh, here it is. Wonderful, wonderful song. Oh, a praise song. Uh, really enjoy it. Okay, and then I'll get to the other news. Okay, so let me go ahead and play that now. I'm going to mute out and then let you enjoy this song. I love it so much as we worship him on his holy Shabbat. Uh, I just want to uh, love the song so much. Okay, let me go ahead and mute it out right now. Um.
Shalom, everyone. I'm Monty Judah with Lion and Lamb Ministries. Welcome to another edition of Messianic World Update. Today's date is Friday, June the 10th of the year 2022. In the previous broadcast, I alerted you to the fact that in Israel they had conducted this military drill called Chariots of Fire, and they had completed it where they were a full IDF uh, practice on practice attacking Iran. That drill is now complete. So the next question is, is Israel going to attack Iran? Will there be a preemptive strike? So let's take it from that moment and where we're at right now today. Israel has now informed uh, other nations, those that are part of the JCPOA, the United States, and so forth, they believe they have a viable plan B. Plan B is the military option in dealing with Iran. Plan A was negotiations. Plan B is a military option with full U.S. coordination and agreement for it. Other nations are also aware. The big question is when will the attack come? Well, the one item that has happened this week that may be part of the reason why it hasn't happened quite yet is that the IAEA, the international organization that monitors Iran and their nuclear program, is now in a whole series of complaints with Iran because they have now caught not only Iran spying on them to try to fend off their uh, analysis and their reporting, but they've also shut down some of their monitoring equipment and are threatening to remove a whole bunch of the monitoring equipment of, that the IAEA uses. Furthermore, they are being unresponsive to the IAEA's questions about so-called undisclosed sites being used in the nuclear program. Where exactly is their stockpile of material? Where's it been moved to? And where's it located at? Iran is not complying or cooperating whatsoever with this organization. And all the nations of the world are relying on the reporting of the IAEA. This last week, this week, the IAEA voted and censured Iran because of that. And they have now announced to the other nations of the world that the IAEA cannot complete its mission of monitoring satisfactorily Iran's program and that they will have no ability to monitor at all within the next three to four weeks, given everything that's going on which means that Iran has nobody watching them, looking over the shoulder, keeping track of what's going on, and there can be no reliable, agreeable status report all the rest of the nations are relying on. Obviously, the agreement is completely dead and gone because the strongest elements of the agreement was the ability of the IAEA to monitor Iran and to keep an eye on what is going on. As a result, at the moment, and I think this is the reason why Israel is being just a little bit patient, is it appears that Iran is moving into the definition of being the uncooperative, the aggressor type, and Israel is now being seen as simply defending themselves instead of the aggressor of a first strike attack on there, which will now give justification to Israel for them to take the action they will. I can assure you that in Israel, that's a very, very important component. Israel is not in the frame of mind of going and attacking places unless they believe they can, basically that the, the rest of the nations will agree with them on it. And, and so that's been the campaign they've used against um, terrorists, the PMU units, Iranian units in Syria, Iraq, and, and attacks in Lebanon. Uh, those all have basically uh, the other nations of the world are okay with what Israel is doing because they see them as keeping Iran at bay. Now, um, Bennett has made uh, also, he's been making this speech before, but it's all of a sudden come into real focus. And he's been saying that when it comes to Iran, we need to be dealing with the head of the monster instead of its arms and legs. 
And it is understood by most people that what Bennett has been talking about is Iran is going around and causing all this trouble in the Middle East. They send Hezbollah, they have Gaza, um, Yemen, uh, they, the PMU units, and they harass and attack and, and uh, so forth. Uh, but Iran itself proper never suffers as a result. Nobody, nobody counterstrikes Iran for it. So B Prime Minister Bennett has now taken the posture, it's time now we take out the head instead of the arms uh, of this monster, which is signaling a, a massive attack on Iran. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see this all play itself out. We'll see how it all turns out with the IDF and with Iran. Let me also share with you just very briefly that uh, within inside politics within Israel, the Bennett coalition is hanging on by a very thin thread. They only have 60 votes out of the 120 votes of the Knesset. The reason they were able to put that coalition together, quite honestly, was because there was about four other very minor parties, normally right-wing parties, that normally would have been with Netanyahu and his right-wing coalition. But because of the stigma against um, Benjamin Netanyahu, he had been the prime minister for 12 years, they wanted to change. They backed away from supporting uh, Netanyahu, joined with Bennett, and basically, they set aside their core principles, their core conservative right-wing principles, in an effort simply to get rid of Netanyahu. So now they're in the Bennett coalition government, and all of a sudden, all of their core right-wing principles that their parties were formed on and what their voters want, they're, 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 none of them are being realized. None of them are being done. So there is this backlash that's starting to build right now and the belief is that the Bennett government's days are numbered and that whether or not there's new elections or not, uh, Netanyahu is online to come back to power with an even stronger coalition than we've recently seen in the government of Israel. So, and, and the concern about that, well, shall we say the concern on the part of others about that, is that clearly the right-wing element, uh, elements within the um, Israeli government, Netanyahu himself, is becoming very hawkish. And to the extent that their rhetoric is very strong about dealing with the Palestinians, about dealing with the riots, about dealing with Iran. And the key operative word here is the word annexation. Um, if you go back to the time when President Trump was in office and, and his uh, son-in-law was going over and negotiating with Israel, and we came up with this thing called the Abraham Accords, Netanyahu was threatening at that point to annex portions of the West Bank where there were Israeli settlements, to bring those settlements into the proper structure of Israel, to be part of Israel permanently, and in an effort to try to deal with that, a trade-off was made to where that if he would lay down his annexation plans, we could do the, the um, Abraham Accords. Well, he made a decision that he think the Abraham Accords would be more meaningful and better for Israel. By the way, that's proved out to be true. But now that the Abraham Accords are in place, he's now coming back and saying, let's go annex um, these territories. Why is that significant? The Temple Mount is one of the areas the government of Israel would finally annex, which would mean Israel would be completely sovereign and in charge of the Temple Mount. It would come out from under any other controls. So that one we are watching very closely. That's a report for this week. Shabbat Shalom to all of you.
Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Unidentified aircraft reportedly caused significant damage to Syrian military installations housing Iranian proxies south of Damascus City. Hassan Nasrallah, Secretary General of the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah, warns that his internationally recognized terror organization will not stand idly by while Israel extracts gas from a newly contested offshore reservoir. The Chief of the Hellenic National Defense General Staff, Lt. Gen. Konstantinos Floros, concludes a first official visit to Israel. Unidentified aircraft launched a salvo of precision-guided munitions toward a number of installations in the southern countryside of Damascus City. Three Syrian military installations said to house Iranian proxy militias were struck last night in a reported bombardment which the Damascus regime immediately attributed to Israel. A Syrian military source noted that the alleged Israeli strike included, quote, bursts of missiles from the direction of the occupied Golan, targeting some points south of Damascus. And while Syria's aerial defense array was activated, a number of the incoming projectiles hit their intended targets, causing significant material losses. It is important to know that prior to last night's strike, circulating reports claimed that Iranian shipments had arrived in Damascus International Airport and that the area that was subject to the purported Israeli attack is evidently controlled by the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah. The IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. Meanwhile, Syed Hassan Nasrallah, Secretary General of the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah, warned that his internationally recognized terror organization will not stand idly by while Israel extracts gas from a newly contested offshore reservoir. In a televised speech from an undisclosed bunker in Beirut, the Hezbollah leader continued by boastfully proclaiming that his organization has the tools to overwhelm Israel's defenses of its offshore rigs, all the while insisting that Israeli activities at the Karish gas reservoir constitute an attack on Lebanon. It is important to highlight that the disputed maritime zone that had been subjected to repeated U.S. broker negotiations between Israeli and Lebanese delegations did not include the Karish Gaz Reservoir, which was uncovered roughly a decade ago, until 2020, when Lebanon conveniently decided to expand its claim, thus encompassing the Karish Gaz field. Israel naturally rejected the expanded Lebanese claim as baseless. In a joint statement by the Israeli Defense, Foreign and Energy Ministers, it highlighted that the Karish rig is a strategic asset of the State of Israel, which prioritizes the protection of its strategic assets and is prepared to defend them and the security of its infrastructure, all in accordance with its rights. The statement continued by emphasizing that the Karish rig is located in Israeli territory several kilometers south of the area over which negotiations are being conducted between Lebanon and Israel under U.S. mediation and pledged further that the rig will not pump gas from the disputed territory. And while negotiations on defining a common maritime border stalled since May of last year over lack of tangible progress, Lebanon called on the United States to send its special envoy Amos Hochstein to address Beirut's latest claims and complete the maritime border delimitation negotiations as soon as possible. It is important to highlight further that while Hezbollah's threats against Israel are deliberate, it knows full well that if it launches such an attack against Israeli strategic assets, it would draw Israel into an all-out war which may not exclude its Iranian patrons. Therefore, in a bid to avoid such a scenario, Hezbollah's Deputy Secretary General Naim Qasim called upon the Beirut government to resolve its dispute with Israel diplomatically. We are working under the border of the Lebanese country in the 
وليس لنا مسار خاص وبالتالي كل ما نستطيعه هو أن نضغط للإسراع في اتخاذ القرار المناسب ولسنا من يحدد مهلة اتخاذ القرار من قبل الدولة هي مسؤولة سنعمل من خلال وزرائنا ونوابنا ووجودنا السياسي أن نضغط على المسؤولين للإسراع في هذا الأمر Qasim also highlighted the necessity to form a new Beirut government as quickly as possible after Hezbollah and its allies lost a parliamentary majority in last month's election, forcing it to negotiate with parties which oppose its Iranian-aligned project. Despite Hezbollah's hope to win over its domestic rivals, its greatest rival, namely the chairman of the Christian Lebanese Forces Party, Samir Jiajia, pledged to reject any cooperation with political actors that align with Hezbollah. We see who is the most popular name. We don't have a veto to anyone, except if someone doesn't want Hezbollah, of course, we will have a veto to him, to be the leader of the government. Or if someone is the leader of the government, of course, we will have a veto to him. We will be able to get out of here, where we will get to these meetings, and we will see, we will get to the end of the day. Jia Jia further acknowledged a major confrontation between the two projects, which include a national Lebanese project that seeks to maintain Beirut's historic connection to the West, as opposed to the so-called Hezbollah project, which aims to secure Iranian dominance over the battered country. news report today today is june 11 2022 3 p.m central here in the u.s god bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world folks please subscribe give us a thumbs up ring that bell for critical future updates in breaking news astronomers have discovered one of the nearly 200 million free-floating black holes in the milky way universe that's right 200 million of them a stellar ghost was discovered. Astronomers may have detected a dark, free-floating black hole. Gravitational microlensing turns up a black hole candidate, one of 200 million plus in the galaxy. When a massive star comes to the end of their lives and explodes in a supernova, they leave behind a black hole. It is estimated that about one in a thousand stars is massive enough to give birth to a black hole with the milky way being home to an estimated 100 to 400 billion stars there are likely vast numbers of black holes throughout our galaxy we're going to actually be able to see where this one is located black holes by their very nature can be very hard to detect especially if they're isolated after all a black hole has such powerful gravity that light doesn't escape, so we generally detect them by their gravitational influence on other objects or by radiation created by the surrounding matter they are devouring. Without nearby objects or creating matter, there could be hundreds of millions of black holes throughout our galaxy that are essentially invisible to astronomers and free-floating. If as astronomers believe the death of large stars leaves behind black holes, 
There should be hundreds of millions of them scattered throughout the Milky Way galaxy. The problem is, isolated black holes are invisible. Now, a team led by University of California Berkeley astronomer has for the first time discovered what may be a free-floating black hole by observing the brightening of a more distant star as its light was distorted by the object's strong gravitational field, so-called gravitational microlensing. The team, led by graduate student Casey Lamb and Jessica Liu, a UC Berkeley associate professor of astronomy, estimates the mass of the invisible compact object is between 1.6 and 4.4 times that of our sun. Because astronomers think that the leftover remnants of a dead star must be heavier than 2.2 solar masses in order to collapse into a black hole, the UC Berkeley researchers caution that the object could be a neutron star instead of a black hole. Neutron stars are also dense, highly compact objects, but their gravity is balanced by internal neutron pressure, which prevents further collapse to a black hole. Whether a black hole or a neutron star, the object is the first dark stellar remnant, a stellar ghost discovered wandering through the galaxy, unpaired with any other star or objects. Scary. This is a Hubble Space Telescope image of a distant star that was brightened and distorted by an invisible but very compact and heavy object between it and Earth. The compact object, estimated by UC Berkeley's astronomers to be between 1.6 and 4.4 times the mass of our Sun, could be a free-floating black hole, one of perhaps 200 million free-floating black holes in the Milky Way galaxy. Quote, this is the first free-floating black hole or neutron star discovered with gravitational microlensing, Lou said. With microlensing, we're able to probe these lonely compact objects and weigh them. I think we have opened a new window onto these dark objects, which can't be seen any other way currently. Determining how many of these compact objects populate the Milky Way galaxy will help astronomers understand the evolution of stars, in particular how they die, and of our galaxy, and perhaps reveal whether any of the unseen black holes are pre-mortal black holes which some cosmologists think were produced in large quantities during the Big Bang. Ladies and gentlemen, they will also help determine if one of these black holes is inbound, as we all think may be one of the problems. God bless you and yours. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World. Kaufman World News Report today. Today is June 11th, 2022, noon central here in the U.S., God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at a picture of the eight major planets within our solar system all lined up visually. Now let me show you what I mean. Saturn, then we have Neptune, then we have Jupiter, then we have Mars, Venus, Uranus, Mercury, and Earth. Unbelievable. This photo was taken on June 9th at 5.30 a.m. from Brisbane, Australia. I've never seen anything like it. I will show you that they're not really lined up in just a second. But let's go to the article. How many planets can you see before breakfast? Tom Harding of Brisbane, Australia, woke up early Thursday morning and found the entire solar system sprawled across the dawn sky. Quote, this might not be a very spectacular image, but it is relatively unique, end quote, says Harding. Quote, captured here in a single photograph for all the major planets of our solar system spanning about 90 degrees across the eastern dawn Brisbane sky. 
Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn could be seen with the unaided eye. Uranus and Neptune require binoculars. This is the first time since December 2004 that the five naked eye planets have appeared together in this way. They are arrayed in order of distance from the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. In the mornings ahead, Mercury will climb higher and brighter, making the group even easier to see. Dates of special interest include June 16th, when Mercury is furthest from the Sun, and June 21st through 26th, when the Moon hops from planet to planet producing a series of early morning conjunctions set your alarm for dawn and enjoy the show let's take a look at what we really are seeing here when you look up you're really seeing the planets look like they're in a line but in all actuality they are grouped up on one side of the sun but that's the extent of it uh, no real lineups are occurring Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, uh, Earth, Mercury, Venus, perhaps. Not very strong alignments. Uh, but visually, they look like they're lined up perfectly with the closest to the sun, the lowest, and the furthest away from the sun, the highest in the sky. That's from Earth in the early morning hours. I want to make sure you all understand one more thing before we end please remember that we're not a flat solar system our sun is expanding from the big boom at around 520,000 miles an hour while the planets orbit the sun are really pulled by the sun through the milky way galaxy through geomagnetic connections that's why the southern hemisphere is always more dangerous for solar flares etc and they're actually orbiting the sun at different speeds, Earth at around 67,000 miles an hour, while it also rotates 360 degrees every day. So everything is not as simple as it seems, but I want my subscribers and viewers to have a more realistic view of what's actually going on. God bless you and yours. Guys, you're looking at an article today, and it's about this heat dome that's over the southwest. It's, going to, it's saying it's going to roast 40 million across southwest amid power blackout threats. And we talked about this a few weeks ago to where the uh, utilities in Texas had put out warnings about that. Uh, lower power, uh, increased natural gas prices and shortages hydroelectric dams uh, up in Utah and Colorado that are in trouble that supplies water so it's kind of a double threat here and what I've talked about for the last few years is that when our Sun is weak during grand solar minimum our shields are weak because they are directly related the more energy from the Sun it's like a the gyro that uh, spins the earth or affects the shields is energized their shields are up and they're vi uh, vibrant and they're strong and they're blocking radiation from space when the shields are weak uh, x-ray radiation gamma radiation from the sun and from space penetrate much easier and your sunburns get much worse your crop damage is worse your drought con uh, conditions are worse what they're saying, the National Weather Service warns that dangerous heat continues from California to the Southern Plains through the weekend. At least 42 million people are under heat watches and warnings in the southwest as a massive heat dome will send temperatures into triple-digit territory across some parts of the southwest. Now, guys, let me say this. This is the map, National Weather Service. You've got... Um, heat warnings extreme heat warnings heat watches all the way through this area but something that uh, usually it does happen like this but all of these are going to break records but all of this guys is about to move this way 
here in central Mississippi, and I'll show you some of the Jackson, Mississippi AccuWeather forecast. We're going to be in triple digits here starting just in a few days. And this is going to continue. Now, luckily, we are not as much as in a drought condition as the southwest is, but it rain is getting um, a little more scarce. Getting some good rains. We got one yesterday, needed it badly. But if you got crops and a lot of them and things like that, uh, it really makes a difference in how they produce. Even though you can water your garden here, you can in some places because of water restrictions. California, that's about to really get tight on you guys. And what's going to happen is a lot of water rights are about to get bought up all the way through the southwest. And when that happens, the farmers will be cut off. It's incredible. But all of this is going to move over to the southeast. Now, we have kids and grandkids that live over in the Phoenix area, and I think it was supposed to get to 115 or 117 there today. It says much of Texas, New Mexico, with parts of Arizona, Nevada, California, could record temperatures well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. Phoenix, Arizona could be the hottest metro area which expected with expected highs around 115 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see this map, guys. When you get into the darker black and the changing of color here, this is where it's at. But all of my friends in Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, you see this creep, and that's about to get uh, much worse. Extreme heat will boost cooling demand in the southwest, increasing power usage that could strain grids. The North American Electric Reliability Corporation, a regulatory body that manages grid stability, warned last month widespread, uh, widespread excuse me, rolling electricity blackouts were possible in the southwest because of declining energy production due to decommissioning of fossil fuel power plants. Guys, I know that uh, there's a tremendous amount of news out there, and you can talk about it uh, until you turn blue in the face. Most of you have been paying attention to this for years. Most of, um, most of the people that I know have. But what we're seeing now is attack on the food supplies, attack on the energy grid, attack on the fuel supplies, the taking down of what we know as a normal life and guys there will never be a new normal and the quicker that everyone realizes that will be the quicker they know and start to prepare think about what i'm telling you i gotta talk a minute what he's talking about guys i got some announcements to make before i get into the other video uh from uh, the news about the the moons coming back again the blood moons or the super moons and then i'm gonna get into carrie Geddon's uh vision on uh her mom had a vision about the tree of life and then we're going to get into missions and the bible so i'm not too far from the bible right now so let me go ahead and finish this up right now but i want to show you the announcements i have that I can't show on here. I don't want to show them on here because I don't want to get a strike. Hopefully not. But this is coming from the Prophecy Club. And I want to announce it to you because we looked at it this morning. Uh, Molak. Uh, you know, this plans to, you know, Molak. Molak, you know. Uh, so we don't know the Bible talk about that word, Molak. But uh, you can see on the screen here all the different topics here, okay. Uh, he's going to cover a little bit about this. So I want you guys to go look at this, please, this video. It's about 42 minutes long. Uh, wow, it's amazing some of these things he's talking about on here, too, how people are just attacking your channel, uh, attacking your businesses, uh, scamming and, and lying and cheating and stealing. So uh, you need to go look at it and see what he's talking about here. I'm not going to play it, people. So I want you to know that's important to go look at. Uh, also, I have this other uh, message coming from you. Be ready. Uh, prophecy day of the trumpet. OK, uh, I will leave this in the description box for you to go look at. Uh, so that's about the only two announcements I have, I think. And I'm going to make sure uh, and I'm going to get over to the blood. Yeah, I think that's all of it now for the announcements I had. Uh, we're going to get back to Carrie here now in a minute after we see. Uh, are you ready for three more super moons in a row? 
uh, coming from World News Report today. So let me go ahead and do that and then get into Carrie and then get into the Bible and missions. Okay, so let me go ahead and mute that out again. Today, today's June 11, 2022, 4.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Have you ever felt like you're in the movie Groundhog Day? Well, that's about how I feel nowadays. Move aside baseball season, never mind beach season. For astronomy nerds, this summer marks the supermoon season. On Tuesday night, sky watchers will witness the first of three summer supermoons. A supermoon occurs when a full moon also happens to be at its closest distance to Earth in its orbit, known as its perigee. Supermoons appear brighter and larger to us on Earth, providing spectacular nighttime gazing if skies are clear. The moon will appear full starting Sunday night, but will technically reach full illumination Tuesday at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time. At around 7.24 p.m. Tuesday, the moon will be close enough to our Earth to be a supermoon. It will come within 222,238 miles of Earth, about 16,000 miles closer than its average distance, and could be about 7% larger and 15% brighter than a regular full moon. While the criteria for a supermoon will be met Tuesday. The moon will appear full and bright in the night sky Monday through Wednesday. Check timeanddate.com for local moonrise and moonset times. This month's full moon will also be the lowest full moon of the year, hovering only 23.3 degrees above the horizon Wednesday at 1.56 a.m. Eastern, according to NASA. Binoculars, a telescope, or an excellent camera may help you spot craters and mountains on the lunar surface. While the moon will appear larger and brighter, it will also accentuate low and high tides on Earth. Research suggests that decades of supermoons have been shown to heighten erosion risks on sandy beaches. June's full moon is commonly known as the Strawberry Moon, a name given by the Algonquin Native American tribe in the northeastern U.S. and eastern Canada and describing the short strawberry harvesting season in the region. European names include honeymoon, rose moon, referring to the honey harvesting and rose blooming during that same time period. Although supermoons are not exceedingly rare, they do not occur every month. A full moon happens every 29.5 days, while the moon hits perigee every 27 days, overlapping occasionally. June's supermoon follows another one that occurred in May. Next month's full moon, known as the buck moon, will occur July 13th and will also be a supermoon. The moon will be within... 222,089 miles of Earth and is the closest supermoon of the year. August supermoon will occur around the 12th of August. The strawberry supermoon is only one exciting celestial event occurring in June. The summer solstice occurs June 21st and marks the astronomical end of spring and the start of summer. On June 24th, before dawn, sky watchers can also see Earth's five closest planets neighboring in a row from the first time in 18 years. Although it's already visible, we saw eight of them today, right? God bless you and yours, folks. For said a couple weeks ago, and in this vision, she saw um she saw a big massive tree coming up from the earth right into the heavens as far as the eyes can take you she saw this tree going up 
And she said when she saw the tree, she saw a man climbing up the tree. It was only him alone. She saw him. He didn't speak or anything like that. But he was just climbing, going up the tree. And she said that was it. That was the vision. Oh, very short, isn't it? Very, very short. I mean, mommy, you know, she likes to give her interpretation and stuff like that. But she did say to me, she said, you know, she said, what do you think? She said, you know, she said, what do you think? She said, I have my own interpretation of this vision. And she said, what What do you think that this this could mean? So I, I, I you know, she's my mom in it. So we're talking and stuff like that. And I said, I, I just, I believe that the tree, the tree that you saw represent the tree of life. That's what came in my spirit. I said, I believe that it represents a tree of life. And I believe that, um, I don't know. I, I just said to her, I, I just believe that the the catching away, <laughs> the carrot, the carting away, you call it the rapture, is near. I said, I believe that the rapture is near. And she said, that my interpretation is very, very similar to yours. She said, my interpretation is that the man that I saw climbing the tree, she said, that's the son of God. She said, that is Christ going up the tree. She said, that's him going up the tree because time is short. So like she said, the tree presents that time is short and that things are now going to be fulfilled on this earth and that Christ is coming back for his church. His bride is, is, is coming. So without her telling me that and then she gave that interpretation, I was like, okay. So, you know, we're literally singing of the same song sheet but i mean that is our interpretation like i say i don't really i don't i don't interpret interpret visions and dreams and stuff like that publicly but like i said because i was speaking to my mom i was able to say this is what i believe it represents so that tree don't know i was going to say eventually that tree will be taken from the earth. But then again, the Bible talks about the tree of life in the midst of the garden. When we go into the new city. Into the new Jerusalem. Into the new heavens. Hallelujah. That new world. That new city that proceeded all from the throne of the Most High. So there's a lot of things to it, brothers and sisters. And I don't really believe it just stop at the rapture or time is short and stuff like that there's other things that is that is to this vision but like i say that is that is our interpretation of what is to come and you know time let me just um yeah i just wanted to find because i say to my mom that what came to me first is the tree of life that it represents the tree of life and if you go to revelation revelation 22 and verse Let's quickly start from verse 1. This is very, very important. And he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of Ahia and Yesiah, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life. So, like I say, when my mommy told me the vision that she saw the tree from the earth going straight up into the heavens, first thing that came in my heart was a tree of life. That's what I got. Um, because the Bible talks about um, there was a tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits. There are 12 tribes, <laughs> right? And yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. All right, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of Ahia and of Yesiah shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. Watch this. My mom saw the man climbing. She saw him. She saw him. Um, and she was able to tell me. She was saying, I just should have said what was he wearing, but I suppose I wasn't really paying attention to that. But she said that, she said, she said, I saw this man climbing the tree and he was, she said, you know, he was of a, a, a brownish, she said he was of a brownish complexion, not overly brown, but 
maybe a little bit lighter than blue my mom says or something like that a little bit but of a brownish browny darkish complexion so to speak going up the tree and watch this the bible says and they shall see his face and his name shall be what in their foreheads and there shall be no night there and there need no candle need a light of the sun for a higher giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever
Oh guys, I tell you, Yeshua said the poor will always be among us, and that's why we have to take part in helping the widows, the orphans, the homeless, uh, missions, those in your neighborhood, my neighborhood, whoever. Do what you can while we can in these evil days, people. Uh, after a while, it's going to get a lot worse. I really want you to go see what Stan Johnson talking about on there on Prophecy Club. Don't miss out on that video. Uh, and uh, some other things I will post in the description box. Another article I want to put in the description box. But I tell you, we are about to go through some things we've never seen on this planet. And the Father is telling me this again in Ezekiel today. Same thing. I mean, I keep trying to get <laughs> away from it. <laughs> and then he points me to it all the time. Uh, so we're going to Ezekiel 6 today. Father, be with us if we go to Ezekiel 6. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit come and be with us as we read your word uh, for end times. Uh, we know that we are in the end at the end. Uh, yes, indeed, the rapture is not far away. I don't think it is. I don't know what day or hour, but we know the seasons are showing us many things to come. Uh, so we know that we need to be ready at all times. Be ready. That's a red alert. My red alert. My red alert, as I like to say, my red alert is to be ready at all times. Because we don't know when death can come at our way. We don't know when our last day. We don't know. We don't know, people. So we need to be always ready. Father, help us to be ready now as we read your word. We ask your Holy Spirit to come be with us. We ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Hi, thank you so much. So you can go ahead and say hello and uh, just get going. Uh, wow, man, I... I hope I can see. <sighs> hello, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 6. Starting in verse 1, the word of Yahuwah came to me and said, Son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel and prophesy to them. Say, mountains of Israel, listen to the word of Lord Yahuwah. Lord Yahuwah says this to the mountains and to the hills, to the stream beds and to the valleys. Behold, I am bringing a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Then your altars will become desolate, and your pillars will be destroyed, and I will throw down your dead in front of their idols. Mm. I will lay the dead bodies of the people of Israel before their idols and scatter your bones around your altars. What did I talk to you about this week on my last video? Was it about what? What chapter was that? He was talking about the uh, idols again. You, oh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10th chapter, talking about the idols and how we need to come out. Even don't eat, but eat food put before idols. And so you now he's talking about the idols again. I, I, I'm just saying it's all these things are just coming in place all over and over again. Go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> we have we have idols today. They're just a lot different. <laughs> yeah. They're, all this technology and all our toys, <laughs> yeah. it's all idolatry. <laughs> Everywhere you live, cities will be laid waste and the high places ruined, so that your altars will be laid waste and made desolate. Then they will be broken and disappear. Your pillars will be cut down and your works will be wiped away. The dead will fall down in your midst, and you will know that I am Yahuwah. Mm. But I will preserve a remnant among you, and there will be some who escape the sword among the ethno-linguistic nations when you are scattered throughout the countries. Mm. Then those who escape will think of me among the ethno-linguistic nations where they will be held captive, that I was grieved by their promiscuous heart that turned away from me, and by their eyes that hoard after their idols. Mm. Then they will show loathing on their face for the wickedness which they have committed with all their abominations. Mm. So they will know that I am Yahuwah. It was for a reason that I said I would bring this evil to them. Lord Yahuwah says this, Clap your hands and stomp your foot. Say, Alas, because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, famine, and plague. Mm. Doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. The one far away will die by plague, and the one who is near will fall by the sword. Those who remain and survive will die by famine. In this way, I will accomplish my fury against them. And famine is coming, people. A lot of people on the YouTube channels today, a watchman, they're already talking about if you haven't shopped yet from the grocery store, you better go there now because they are really getting ready to put the prices up worse than gas is up. Gas is going to go up to about $14 a gallon. Uh, I'm telling you, I've seen this happen long, many years ago. You can go in the grocery store and look at an item, and you might have said, wow, I paid uh, $5 for that. And the next time you go in, it's $25. That's how it's going to become, people. So shop now while you can. 
I'm serious about it. Shop, get water filters, get water, get whatever you need, your basics. Don't be putting it off any longer. Go ahead, go ahead. You go into a $10 loaf of bread, yeah. then a $100 yeah. loaf of bread, then the $1,000 <laughs> loaf of bread, and then the million dollar loaf of bread, and then just, then we're out of touch. Mm. Then you will know that I am Yahuwah, when their dead lie among their idols, around their altars, on every high hill, on all the mountain peaks, and under every flourishing tree and thick oak, the places where they burned incense to all their idols. I will strike with my hand and make the land desolate and a waste, from the wilderness to Ribla, throughout all the places where they live. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah. Yep, all over the world. And so we're going to go ahead and end the video and get into Maranatha. Very important message from Maranatha. White raiment requires, okay? White, white raiment requires. Uh, but I'm telling you, with all these things coming on in the Pacific right now, they talk about they got tsunami threats going on. We got another uh, hurricane coming near the cent uh, century, central part of America. Uh, and so all these moon, the moon, blood moons, I just talked about the super moon. Uh, this is covering the earth being on fire. Yeshua said, would well, be fire this time, not water, okay? Uh, I think they were talking about a double rainbow yesterday. I don't even know exactly what town and state that was, but this guy was talking about the double rainbow. It's a promise of God that he will not flood the world again with water. So it's going to be fire this time, people. The whole world will wander after the beast system. As we know, uh, they are getting ready things in order, getting ready, getting ready. So are you getting ready? We should be getting ready because they can come knocking on our door any time, you know, to take the guns away, whatever they decide to do. Uh, so we need to be knowing Yeshua is coming soon. All the signs are showing, absolutely showing. So let's go here now to Maranatha and play uh, White Raiment Required. And then I'm going to let you guys go enjoy the rest of your Shabbat. Uh, so it, it's just so many things are going on already before us. We need to be always bowing down, humbling ourselves to receive salvation. March 11, white raiment required. When the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? Matthew 22, 11 and 12. By the wedding garment in the parable is represented the pure, spotless character which Christ's true followers will possess. To the church it is given that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Revelation 19.8 The fine linen, says the scripture, is the righteousness of saints. Ephesians 5.27 It is the righteousness of Christ, his own unblemished character that through faith is imparted to all who receive him as their personal savior. The white robe of innocence was worn by our first parents when they were placed by God in holy Eden. But when sin entered, they severed their connection with God, and the light that had encircled them departed. Nothing can man devise to supply the place of his lost robe of innocence. Only the covering which Christ himself has provided can make us meet to appear in God's presence. This covering, the robe of his own righteousness, Christ will put upon every repenting, believing soul. This robe, woven in the loom of heaven, has in it not one thread of human devising. Christ in his humanity wrought out a perfect character, and this character he offers to impart to us. All our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6. Everything that we of ourselves can do is defiled by sin, but the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin, 1 John 3, 5. By his perfect obedience he has made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandments. When we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united with his heart. The will is merged in his will. The mind becomes one with his mind. The thoughts are brought into captivity to him. We live his life. This is what it means to be clothed with the garment of his righteousness. Then as the Lord looks upon us, he sees not the fig leaf garment, not the nakedness and deformity of sin, but his own robe of righteousness, which is perfect obedience to the law of Jehovah. Oh yeah, all the laws are important. Some people say we don't need them. We don't need the commandments. We don't need this. We don't need that. But you know, 
I hope you're reading your Bible, people. Hope you're reading your Bible. We're going to go ahead and close. What's wrong? Go ahead. Oh, we're going to go ahead and close this out now. Um, so I hope you guys are really uh, staying in the Word, being in the Word, uh, not just doing these little trivia five-minute prayers anymore. You need to be doing spiritual warfare prayers over your households day and night over us, over the people in your life, over your families. I mean, really, we need prayer, too, a lot of prayer. I think I'm put, I have approached the 70 mark, and I'm telling you, I'm feeling it some days. <laughs> and I'm telling you, we need energy and strength from the Lord above. We absolutely need it when you get into these age, age categories. But uh, we're asking you guys to continue to support us, and uh, we thank you for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, those that need a mission fields, may Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you. Uh, donation options, Tidely app, Cash app, Bump card, uh, fmcmi.org, our website. Please go to our website. You'll see a lot of more materials there, uh, poems and inspirational readings and all kind of stuff is on our website and pictures of the uh, missionaries and all that is at the uh, website. Uh, you can also get donate at marner.com at gmail.com and PayPal. Uh, you can mail in your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, shipping anything to us at Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. Uh, you have something to add to this or anything? Oh, okay. oh if you wanted to go show them stuff on your website or something. Yep. I can't get that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Uh, I was going to go tell you guys, as you don't remember, did I put the website up here? I think I did. If you go to the website here, you could, like I was just saying, you can see a lot more materials. You'll see all the pictures my husband posted, all the missionaries, uh, different things to see on there. Uh, if you want to talk about some things on there you want to bring out. Well, on our downloads page, you can go there and download whole bunch of different modules on my son of man bible and then marner's three books and i've got some spreadsheets there backing up some scriptures so there's exciting stuff on here and our blog of course is always on there show that so you can get in marner's <laughs> posting her videos on the blog <laughs> so there's there's things to look yeah, at there yeah. you can mm -hmm. uh go to the resource page you can actually read my bible right here on a pdf format the speed of here's how fast our internet is see <laughs> that's how it shows you how fast that is <laughs> but you can read right through the whole bible right there <laughs> on the internet page so that's cool and so yeah and also just know that when things shut down that's that's what i know our bob mentioned that on about his website if things shut down you can always go to the website page you know website page instead of uh, YouTube, or, uh, Rumble, or whatever, you can go to the website. So just remember that, people. Uh, FillMyCupMinistries.org, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let him close out with prayer and let you guys go. We're already at an hour and 15 minutes, so that's pretty good. So go ahead. Father, we just thank you. We just love mm -hmm. you so much, and we thank you for Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Thank you for forgiving us and cleansing us from all unrighteousness, Father. Mm -hmm. We... Are sorry we seemed like we're always sinning, tripping ourselves up, making fools of ourselves by sinning. Mm -hmm. Father, help us to completely get over sin, walk in total righteousness forever. Mm -hmm. We love you that much. We want to walk like Yeshua. In mm -hmm. Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, guys. I love you guys so much. I uh, really hope that you can go and uh, really start sharing things with people. It's really time to seek the Lord while he's near, call on him while he's seek the lord while he may be found i'm sorry and call on him while he is near so we're going to go ahead and close out and say shabbat shalom and shalom. sanctify yourselves you shall sanctify yourselves and be holy for i am holy Amen. so uh we thank you so much for being here with us today shabbat shalom love you guys so much shabbat, shabbat shalom, shalom. bye-bye